Hi YouTubers. You may have seen that recently I went to a local creationist meeting. It, it probably wasn't um, a huge major mega church like they get in America with these sort of creationist meetings they have there. But it was a small congregation of about 40 people. I hope you watched it. It was quite fun. I found it really interesting actually. Really interesting. Um, I, it was a step into the mindset really of, of how the people think there and how they meet, how you have to meet to just say evolutionists are evil, evolutionists are evil, Darwin was evil, Darwin should, you know it was, it was a bit like that, they, they preach to each other all the time and just preach about um, lying to each other and convincing themselves that what they're doing is right and it really took somebody like myself to go along and, and point a few things out. I would be delighted to go back, believe it or not, but I wanted more questions and answers. I needed really to explain things better. You sometimes, they get, you know, they get these presentations of an hour, an hour and a half sort of thing. And uh, you try and respond to that in a few quick questions and you're not going to get anywhere. What you really need, I would love to go back for like an hour and a half of just question and answer session and trying to point out where they're going wrong anyway while i was there um i couldn't resist for 10 pence they had they had a little sort of book area where you could buy these weird books and they had um I, th this one was one of them um as you can see um nice picture of a boxer dog on the front and uh can you tell the difference between evolution and natural selection um, which is a fascinating little pamphlet um, a little bit in it here and I wanted to go over this really because a lot it's, it's it's just a progression really they they've progressed slightly from what they did before they're now admitting evolution is um, is fine or natural selection is fine but that's different from evolution and this is the latest zeitgeist of the moving of the uh, of the creationists and um, I used to think you know they thought everything was built it was in, done in six days and uh, and the world is five or six thousand years old well things are progressing on a little bit more why after all was I having a discussion with them about the Cambrian age about the earliest arthropods why I mean why were they even contemplating that there was a time be before when the core, where the chordates, the sort of phyla that we come from, the go through, following the backbone fish and all, etc. Why were they even talking about this time? Because they have to take all those things into consideration as well. And uh, it seems that they they were prepared to accept there are phyla of animals, but they were the ones that God put there. And um, I couldn't quite understand how they fitted it all into the time scale. It was a bit obscure. But anyway, let's go back to this because it's, it seems to sort of cover dogs mostly. And I might have to read a little bit to you. Oh, I hate doing that. Anyway, the big heading at the top in blue. Um, a lot of people confuse the term evolution with natural selection. Hmm, so do I. That's, that's odd. Do you know the difference between them? Let's see. Okay, and it starts off quite well, really. Um, it says, right, wild animals naturally have a lot of varieties in their genes. For example, in dogs, there is a variety with regards to how long their coat is and how big their ears are, how long their legs are and how big they grow, what colour their fur is and so on. Okay, uh, there is lots of variety. The variation in appearance resides in the dog's genes. See, they like genes. Well, I don't mean the blue variety, obviously. The different characteristics that show up in a litter of puppies demonstrate uh, the inbuilt variety. So far, so good. I like it. People have been breeding dogs for thousands of years to select particular traits, and that is particular genes. Okay. Um, I must just get a glass of water next time it is. But continually breeding small dogs together, we can end up with small, short-legged dogs like Jack Russells. Actually, 
Jack Russells are quite small dogs, but they're not necessarily short legs. I've seen some long legged Jack Russells, but that's beside the point. We'll carry on. Um, or by continually breeding larger dogs together, people have ended up with bigger dogs like Labradors. The natural varieties of the genes have been selected by omitting these dogs for breeding purposes um, that do not have characteristics, characteristics one wants. So, the Labradors no longer have the genes for growing short legs. Or at least they're subdued, suppressed, I think is what they're trying to say. Jack Russells no longer have the genes for long legs. Not exactly true. As I said, there are long legs. Jack Russells, but only long legged in comparison to the height of, you know, to the size of the actual dog. Um, however, that does not really matter, it's just me being picky. Uh, those genes have been selected out by careful breeding. That's correct, that's right. Uh, some of the natural varieties have been lost from the dog's genes. Well, suppressed, that's what. Okay, so far it's so good, and it goes on. Uh, the modern Labrador probably arose in Canada about 200 years ago. Jack Russell's developed in the 1800s in England uh, by a man named John Russell. Hmm, maybe they call him Jack as a sort of sidekick name for a joke. Um, he, or maybe his, maybe his dog was called Jack. He'll be John. Jack. Jack was his Russell, you know, Jack Russell Terrier. Hey. Um, anyway, for fox hunting it says, well, it's also for rabbiting and things. They, they go down burrows and they chase out animals um, down holes and things. However, that's what they were bred for. In all cases, specialised breeds of dogs and natural varieties of the genes have been reduced. These genes have been selected, right, by selective breeding. That's quite right. Selective breeding can also be uh, reversed. For example, if we breed a Jack Russell and a Labrador together, we would get a dog that has lots more variety in its genes. Yeah, I've never actually seen a cross between a Labrador and a Jack Russell, to be honest. I'm not saying it's impossible, and there probably are one out there, but I, certainly you couldn't do a Great Dane in the Shawawa, for instance. They're, they're, the sizes are just too obscure. You couldn't, um, you couldn't actually get them to breed unless you held them, you know. Um, which probably wouldn't work. Um, and then you may get something in the end. I would, I would hate it to be the... You might get... I hate it the female to be the Jack Russell, though. Um, can you imagine? Huge Labrador puppies. And a Jack blow up, wouldn't it? Anyway... Um, I suppose they could be very small. Anyway, forget it. They're very small Labradors. Um, I'm not saying it's impossible, but there does come a point when you uh, when you subspeciate animals, even in selective breeding, that you can no longer actually mate them together. Most dogs will mate together. We will accept that. We'll, we'll carry on from there. Right. Oh, this is going to be too long. This I'll have to hurry up. Natural selection is the same. As selective breeding except that selecting a gene is done by nature rather than people absolutely that's exactly what does happen and sometimes things in nature will selectively breed uh, other animals um, okay by mister no, they don't do it on purpose it's just the way it is um, I'll explain that another time however um, for example Arctic wolves live in a very cold, very cold climate um, in the Arctic Circle they have thick coats, small round ears and short legs so they don't lose body heat. The cold climate has selected the genes for the most suitable for the dogs, or wolves in this case, that live there. Uh, in hot Africa... Oh, where's my phone? Oh, what am I on? OK, I'll get this finished. Sorry. Ah, where was I? I have no idea now. I had to answer that phone call. It was work, you know. Oh, they're so terrible. Anyway, we are on about Arctic foxes, weren't we? Uh, African hunting dogs could not live near the Arctic. It would be too cold. The dogs would die out. Yeah, OK, that's fair enough. In these examples, the climate has selected from a natural variety of genes to produce the dogs that can survive in very different types of climate. These are examples of natural selection. OK, so we've basically, so far, they've agreed with me almost entirely on natural selection. Then it goes straight in and says, now let's think about evolution. Right. Imagine a dog that, in addition to having its four legs, also has a pair of wings coming out of its back. Um, for that to happen, a whole new set of information would have to be added to the dog's DNA. Yes, it bloody well would, wouldn't it? Yes, that's right. That's why it has absolutely fucking nothing to do with evolution. Oh, God. I don't know if I need, need I read on. It goes on, anyway. Information about how to manufacture true feathers and how to make the special bones that support the feathers. Also, new information in the dog's brain about what the wings are for and how to use them. Adding such new information to an existing animal's DNA has never been uh, seen to occur naturally. 
No, it hasn't. Which is exactly what we've been bloody well telling you for bloody ever. Idiots. Right. Dogs always reproduce dogs not flying dogs. Oh. Oh. Fail. I've got this, one of these machines here. It's a sound machine. It's really quite good, actually. Oh, could have used that one. Anyway, I'm going to time. Oh, shut up. Now I've dropped it on the floor. Ah, now I've got out of focus. It's always, always a nightmare, isn't it? I've got to get this finished because I think it's so much fun. Right. Um, so, dogs do not have the DNA information to grow wings. Well, who'd have thought it? For the theory of evolution to work, such an in, um, such uh, such in microbes evolving into humans, right? Goo to you, hey, <laughs> evolution. Goo to you, evolution. That's what they call it. It requires massive amounts of new information to be added in the genes of the microbes. Okay, okay. Calm. I'm calming down now. I'm calming down. Yes. Now, ah, oh, dear. Do we have to start right at the beginning? Um, those early phyla, all the way through, even whale evolution, they all go off on different branches. You can't turn back time. They all have a bra dogs and bears, okay? You're going on about dogs. Go back to the ancestry of dogs. Go back to the weasel-like creature that started at the beginning. There's no point in me remembering its name, even if I could. Um, but it was there, it was in the fossil record. Then we have other, other carnivores, the carnivore split, the feline and the canines. And of course, cats and dogs, they all come from the carnivore group. But they split off millions of years ago, never to return from that point. But they did have that common ancestor. And they never grew wings, never could. They don't turn into butterflies. The crocodiles and ducks can't suddenly marry. It doesn't happen. It can't happen. And evolutionists have never said it could. It's only creationists that say it could. Oh, give me strength. Anyway, that was just wonderful. This leaflet, by the way, um, it's, um, it was distributed by the Culloden Gospel Hall. Um, I think it gives you the meeting times of when they meet. Unfortunately, Culloden's a long way from me. But uh, there you are, visit for details, visit creationontheweb.com. Ah. Thanks. I'll, um, I've, I've still got this one to do. I haven't got time, but they st I've got another one called Darwin in the Dock. Another amazing pamphlet. But it's interesting, isn't it, that they now think natural selection. Yeah, that's fine. Natural selection, we've got no problem with that. Um, it's just evolution that we've got a problem with. Okay. Peace. Speak to you soon.